welcome to the first Essex TV news show of this year with me, Caroline Dunmore. And me, Tom Phillips. Today we'll be discussing the latest news around campus covering everything from the Judy Bindle controversy to Claxon selection of the first UKIP MP. Firstly though, a little word about Freshers Week. With an additional thousand freshers, this year saw record crowds attend DJ sets by international acts such as Stigma, DJ Fresh and Hot Dub Time Machine in Sub-Zero. Make sure you keep an eye out on Essex TV Online on YouTube for both our freshest coverage and our coverage for the brand new nightclub, Bounce TV. Last Monday was the accommodation transfer date, a date many students, some actually homeless, were depending on in order to move out of their university-given homes and swap with other students. The amount of students able to be housed by university accommodation was not capped this year, leading to a last-minute panic over and oversubscribed places. Earlier in the year, the university promised its returning students a place on campus if they so desired. When Results Day came around and hundreds of freshers confirmed their places at the university, they gave over a week until the deadline, in which hundreds more were confirmed a place within university accommodation. Unfortunately, due to this high demand and with little places available, Essex Accommodation Services left many UK, EU and international first years living either off campus or without a place altogether. Some off-campus accommodation, such as the Maltings, is still in the process of being built. Freelance journalist Julie Bindle spoke at the University of Essex last week as part of the Think Seminar series. Bindle is the co-founder of Justice for Women and is widely known for her controversy surrounding her transphobic and homophobic attitudes. Despite efforts to stop Bindle appearing, the radical feminist did speak alongside industry expert Jerry Barnett about pornography and censorship as planned. We spoke to President of the SU, Chantelle Carpenter, and Vice President for Welfare and Community, Sharina Durrell, about the controversy around the subject. Judy Bindle um, has some quite horrific views on LGBT people, uh, most notably uh, transgender people. Uh, so my personal opinion, although the debate isn't centred around, around conversations around trans people, um, around trans issues in general or LGBT issues, is that there, Julie Bindle's views have no place on this campus. From both sides. Um, so from a legal perspective, she has every right to be here and to speak on what she's speaking about, which is pornography. Really, really bad move and, and slightly short-sighted um, inviting Julie onto campus. Um, she has been kicked off of several university campuses, um, Manchester, Sheffield, um, and I think she's due to speak in Nottingham soon as well. Um, so I really think that Essex should follow suit um, and also and not have Julie speak um, on campus. From a welfare perspective, I don't think it's in the best interest of a lot of our transgender and bisexual as well as Muslim students because she's also known to speak out against Sharia law. Um, um, now. I think radical feminism is great. Uh, personally, uh, I subscribe to the idea of being a radical feminist. There are a group of people that call themselves radical feminists, however, that are very trans exclusionary. Um, and in my opinion, those people actually aren't feminists because um, feminism isn't feminism if it's not including um, transgender women as well, um, or any other, you know, any other type of woman as well. The first initial article about these issues with bisexual and transgender people were written in 2004. I would love to have a conversation with her and see what she thinks now. Um, 10 years ago was quite a long time, so um, maybe she's changed her views, maybe she hasn't, but um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so her views are that transgender women perhaps do not belong in feminism and are perhaps not even women, which is an atrocious, horrible and disgusting viewpoint to have. Um, and that is her viewpoint. Um, it, it started in 2004 and she wrote like, a really nasty article in The Guardian. Um, and it's transpired from there and she's she's tracked back and apologized a few times for things and it just keeps being another awful thing she said i think it's best if the next time the university organizes these events if they do a little bit more investigation as to who they event a lot of people have the same views she has on pornography i share the same views as her um on pornography as well um but i'm not a trans exclusionary radical feminist like she supposedly is so recently she spoke and said that being gay was a choice um and it was, it was always a choice um she did track back eventually and say that sometimes it's a choice um which i suppose remains to be seen to be honest um and she said some horrible things about bisexual people as well um so all in all just 
has some quite horrendous views um, and that's where it centres from and I don't think Essex, a place we've just got 10 out of 10, a gay by degree, um, accreditation from Stonewall, I think it's only one in six, um, one of only six higher education institutions that receive this so it's really really excellent that we got it and I think it's, it's such a shame that we do have someone with her opinions coming to campus. I don't really agree with anything that's just said um, about um, Sharia law, I'm not Muslim but I don't agree with the things she said about Sharia law. I don't agree with the things she said about bisexual people or transgender people either. Um, her, the grammar that she uses and the eternal language that she uses is very aggressive and rude. I'm worried for the students I represent, you know, the LGBT students I represent, but also other students that are, that are offended by her as well and what her being on campus will tell them and what it will tell them about what their university thinks is perhaps not okay to say, but is, is okay to be welcomed onto our campus. Chantal, thank you very much for your time. After the talk, Bindle confronted protesters outside the LTB. The group of campaigners told her the issue was not up for discussion. Elsewhere, this week, Essex is to host a series of events as part of Black History Month. On Monday, a conference celebrating the progress of the black community was held, exploring the group's past, present and future. Key figures such as Charles Weston and Richard Cootie delivered talks on a wide range of subjects, such as colonialism, black women in history and racism. Yesterday, the activities continued with a live student production celebrating African and Caribbean culture, which was hosted in the, in the Lakeside Theatre. A special screening of Invictus starring Morgan Freeman will be shown in Sydney 10 tonight as part of the celebrations. From 5pm on Thursday, there will be a Caribbean buffet in the SU bar. And on Friday, the events will, continue, will come to a close with the African and Caribbean Cu Cultures Festival set to be held in Square 3 from 12pm. Earlier this month, the UK Independence Party gained its first elected MP. Following weeks of campaigning, Douglas Carswell won the seat of Clacton by convincing 12,404 majority vote on October the 9th. As the first UKIP MP in the history of UK politics, Carswell commanded 60% of Clacton's votes on election night. The ex-Tory MP defected to UKIP earlier this year. Nigel Farage, the leader of the UKIP party, said he expects others to do the same. Elsewhere now, the results of a national survey announced earlier this month show University of Essex Cinematics dance and drama graduates to be the lowest earners in the country. The survey found that six months after graduating, an Essex dance, drama or cinematics student could expect to be earning on average £11,963 annually. Computer science graduates from Oxford University boasted the highest wages, earning an average of £43,895 per annum. This figure is nearly four times greater than the Essex graduate's salary. We asked drama students at our cultures to campus if the news affected them. It's not something that really bothers me, to be honest, because I'm doing something that I enjoy. No, honestly, I'm not really sure how to respond to it. I'm sure as far as statistics go and getting a job and everything, it is a bit hard coming out of uni. Uh, I guess it's a bit worrying, um, but I guess you've got to try and make, make do the best you can, really. Um, that's not something that's worrying me just yet. Probably get to the end of third year, I'll be really worried about it, but for now I'm just taking it as it comes. Just work hard at what you want to do and have a clear, clear like, focus and clear mind about where you want to go with it and what, what you want to do in, like, in terms of what aspect you want to go into with drama. You know, if you want to do teaching, acting, um, producing, that sort of thing, you've got to be clear and you've got to be... I guess determined that you can make it with what you want to do. Yeah. With something as competitive as a drama major, but I feel like whoever's able to really break into that kind of career is someone who's truly passionate about it, and anyone who really pursues a major like this, that just shows that they have true commitment and true heart. And I think even though it's one of the lowest standing, that it doesn't really matter because those who do it truly love it, and that's all that really matters. Police are appealing for information after two girls were assaulted by a man at Sub-Zero nightclub at around 1am on Thursday the 2nd of October. The suspect is said to be aged around 20 years old and wore a grey jumper and jeans. Anyone with information is urged to call PC Hellsgrave at Colchester Police Station on 101. Alternatively, call Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 111. Now, in just under three weeks' time, Essex Blaze and the Society's Guild will be hosting RAG Week. RAG stands for Raising and Giving, and in previous years has, see, has seen 
the Blades and the Sock Guild raised a substantial amount of money for local charities and foundations, such as Colchester Rape Crisis. Participating Essex Sports Club and Societies hope to double last year's amount and together with the Students' Union have set themselves a target of £36,000. Vice President for Activities Luke Bowdry has planned an action-packed week which includes Glow-in-the-Dark Zumba, a fun fair hosted by Essex Blades and the Societies Guild, a world record attempt and a RAG hosted by Sports Fed. You can catch all the action of RAG Week from the 17th to the 21st of November. Now an update on the Blades with our sport guy TJ Eldad. Thanks Caroline. Well this year starts a new motion by the University and the Students Union you know, called Free the Blades. This year we see students able to join any club at no cost at allowing further participation at university and in box. It's an exciting year for the performance sports of volleyball and basketball as they hope to continue the perfect start to season. Both sports continue to dominate the box leagues in tremendous fashion and are hoping for the form to continue throughout the season. Now, while this week is a quiet one for the Blaze due to buys in the Cups, one team starts their box relatively late on the academic year in American football. The Blaze will start their box season at home against our rivals, UEA Pirates. Now, for those of you who do not know this game, it's one to go and watch. Not only because of its arrivals, but also a little bit taste of what every day will be like. The game is on Sunday, 16th November, on Rivino Park's rugby pitches, so be sure to go over there in time for the 1 o'clock kickoff. And that's all for the sports news. Over to Caroline. And that brings the show to an end. We want to thank the staff at the Students' Union, Kaylin Toms and Ed Grove for their contributions, Chantal Le Carpenter and Sharina Darrell for the and also the cast and producers and directors of the trial. We also want to give a huge thanks to the Media Centre for making this show possible. We will be back on air on the 19th of November. So until then, I've been Caroline Dunmore. And I've been Tom Phillips. Goodbye. Goodbye.